right, good morning. I'm Colin Ward, the Directory Schedule Board of Supervisors meeting for this Tuesday, November 1st, 2016, and ask if everyone please join the board as we honor America with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, first item on the agenda is public comment. Number one, it's an opportunity for members of the public to address topics on today's agenda. Anybody wishing to do so, please come to the microphone now. Seeing no one moving to the microphone, uh, we'll move on to consideration of minutes. And this is both the September 30th appointment minutes and the minutes from our regular meeting on October 25th. Move to adapt. And I'll second. Is there any corrections, additions, or notations? None. She. Aye. Sanders, aye. Minutes passed. Personnel actions as listed, Mark. Considered to accept as proposed. Second. Uh, any discussion? Aye. She. Aye. Sanders, aye. Personnel actions passed. Claims. We would consider claims. And I'll second. Uh, Chitty. Aye. Sanders, aye. Claims passed. Consent agenda, please add road closure 1722 and 1723 and utility permit 17-036. Move to accept consent agenda with above noted changes or additions. And I'll second uh, Chitty. Aye. Sanders, aye. Consent agenda passes. No public hearing items. Uh, additional items, consideration of resolution 1735, amending FY17 appropriations. Old Mark, always wanting money. Morning, Mrs. Mark Lane. <laughs> Lisa, how are you holding up with the election? Oh, it's Sarcastically, she says. Oh. No, we're doing fine. This too shall pass. Seven days from now. Seven days from That's now. That's right. Um, what I have in front of you is what I threatened to bring in front of you last week or two weeks ago when I said I was going to um, amend the appropriations at the beginning of the fiscal year in order to start spending money. We did 50% appropriation for all the departments, with a few exceptions. Um, Countywide general plan that we went ahead and did 100% right off the bat. Um, at this point in time, I have before you an uh, appropriations amendment that uh, has an additional 45% to the departments and the like officials. I did 45% across the board for an additional appropriation. The other 5% can be appropriated at any point. Questions? None. Anything else to add? Let's see. This is not a public hearing. I'd, I'd ask anybody want to address resolution 1735. All right, board action. I would move to adopt 1735 and FY 17 appropriations. And I'll second discussion. Chief. Aye. Sanders, aye. Resolution 1735 passes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Back to work. Now I'm going to go back. Sorry. Morning, Next item is discussion and consideration of fire alarm signal separation. Uh, Cal, how was the fishing? Uh, windy, but fishing was excellent. How cold was it? So Cal goes up to Canada uh, every year about this time. And In the 30s. There was snow on the day I left. I, I left a little early because the wind wouldn't settle down. Uh, excellent. Big northern fishing. Oh, yeah. Big, yeah, 20 pounds though. Yeah, no, my son always comes back with pictures and stories too. That's part of it. I'm not a fisherman, my son is, so. <laughs> All right, we're talking about uh, fire alarms. Okay, um, years ago, the uh, prior fire chief insisted on having the Justice Center on one signal alarm at the Justice Center. I mean, if anything goes off anywhere in the building, the whole building alarms. The, the buildings themselves were built with firewalls. So there's three, actually there could be seven different separate buildings out there separated by firewalls. What I, I asked the, the present fire chief, I, I mentioned to him the, the problem with these uh, sprinkler heads getting knocked off in the jail, which causes disruption through the whole building. There's a, a serious trial going on. Well, all trials are serious. They have to evacuate the building wherever they're at. So uh, 
I mentioned this to him and I asked him, can we separate this back? And he says, absolutely. So I got verbal and written approval from the, the current fire chief here in Nevada to uh, do the separations so that uh, we can eliminate these problems that are happening. Uh, the price tag was a little more than I thought it was going to be. That's why I'm here today. Uh, I felt it was important that we move on this as soon as possible, but uh, I wanted the board to be aware and make the decision if we can do it now or if you want me to wait till budget time to, to work on this. Um, just in the uh, paperwork I did send with, there was three, three in September alone. Two by one individual and one by another one. So uh, I was hoping the jail administrator would be here today to elaborate on, on this has been an ongoing problem for years that uh, we've seen. So. Right, and we're not going to take care of that problem by doing this, but what we're going to take care of is the disruption to the rest of the building every time one of these happens. Exactly. So we've got an yes. inmate that's kicking off yes. sprinkler heads, right? Yes. And we've also, they've come out with a new, more vandal resistant fire sprinkler head that, that is much harder for them to vandalize, to vandalize that, uh, in hopes that they would see them on the camera in time to get in and, uh, and stop it before it happens. But you know, not only the uh, people evacuating all the time and then saying, well, is this a fire? Is it just a drill? What's going on? But uh, also, you know, if you remember last year, I spent a lot of money on putting magnets up. Well, every time these go off, those doors close. <laughs> now we're finding even the doors with magnets, they're propping them open with the chocks again. So, so <laughs> the magnets. Yeah, we don't want people desensitized yeah. to the to the alarm. When the alarm goes off, the first thought shouldn't be, oh, somebody just kicked off a sprinkler head again. So there's a little bit of. Uh, equipment hardware that needs to be added. We may need to run a few cables, but the majority of it is proprietary um, programming of the Simplex fire alarm system to uh, accomplish this. So, and it's $7,000, which is above $5,000. And how's your budget looking so far? This it's year? I know we're really tight. That's, that's my concern. So we need to, we need, uh, in, on approval of this, we need to consider adding $7,000 or thereabouts later in the year when you start to get close. Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, so Marty, normally the way the board has operated is when we have a request like this, first thing we do is look to see if we can do it out of currently budgeted dollars. Cal's been phenomenal at that through the years. In fact, I don't remember, I don't remember a time in the last three or four years that we've had to add money into your budget at the end of the year. You've been absorbing the unforeseen things in what we've budgeted. Uh, he's given us a heads up that that may not be the case this time. And so if we approve this, in my mind, we would also be approving the reality that we may have to go find $7,000 at the end of the year in additional dollars to put into facilities. Absolutely. Okay. Questions for Cal? So is this going to help by doing it to break it out to what parts of the building the actual alarm goes off and is that going to give any notice to the fire department at all or is that just tell us where it's at? Well, at this building, we aren't hooked up to Sim Simplex monitoring system. It, it rings into master control. Master control then can make the decision whether the fire department needs to be called okay. or if it's an actual fire, if other areas need to be evacuated. So, so that's the way this system works out there. So we, we, we have staff there 24-7. They monitor the fire alarm. So now walk me through procedurally. If a sprinkler head gets damaged in the jail, once if we make these changes, what alarms will go off? In the jail only. Okay. Sheriff only, if there's a problem in the sheriff's office. Court side only, if, if there's a problem over there. Yep. It's like it's three independent. We're separated areas. out into three separate areas instead of yes. one. Okay. Okay. Glad to see you get a uh, fire chief who wants to work with you. Yeah. Absolutely. He's been very, very helpful in many things since since we've got him on board and uh, glad to have him. Good. So if you're if you're okay with it, Marty, I would uh, like a uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve. I would uh, move to approve the seven thousand dollars for the uh, Tyco Simplex Grinnell uh, fire system. 
at the Justice Center for $7,000. And I'll second it, and I want to just make the note that this board fully recognizes that that $7,000 uh, may not be able to be absorbed in the existing budget. It may, this may entail an addition of $7,000 to the facility budget. That's fine. Uh, anything further? Questions that the council will do it pretty well. Okay, Chief. Aye. Sanders, aye, it passes. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you for your time. Everybody. We're glad you're back. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Lee Ann. Thank you for coming in today. Uh, what if I wanted to skip this next item and go to something? Okay. <laughs> Discussion and consideration of proposed amendments to the Story County Economic Development Group bylaws and program guidelines. We also have the chair of that group here today. Jennifer, how about if you come on up as well? Morning, Jennifer. Good meeting last week. All right, so I'm going to give a 20-second uh, history of what happened here. Uh, ongoing conversation. This group was, was established in the late 80s, early 90s. It's been a great group for Story County, but its mission and focus has clearly changed over the last few years. Uh, the group has been talking internally for several years about the possibility of updating their organizational documents to reflect the realities of how they're operating. Uh, a year or so, a year ago, as part of the budget process, this group asked for the Story County Board of Supervisors to increase funding from I think it was a, it's 100,000 to 125,000, I believe, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and that request was turned down at that point. And one of the main reasons given was we want the organizational documents to be updated prior to any increases or changes in the, in the funding. Uh, so the group's been working hard on that, and here's where we are. Um, I think I'm going to start with the bylaws. Okay. And just highlight for the board and members of the audience uh, what the proposed changes are and um, rationale for those changes. Kick in whenever you want and just ask questions as we go to. Um, just starting with the purpose statement, section 1.02, uh, clarifying just some. Some annual reports are necessary, some annual budgeting, and then um, referencing the program guidelines. And that is beneficial because then um, not only do the program guidelines have the types of projects that are allowed through the, through the um, pool funds, the project funds, I have to get the language right now because we've changed terms too. Uh, and that's a good, good connection between the two documents. And then going on to the next page under the membership, referencing the appointed representative form, Jennifer has gone ahead and drafted one that each of the communities will use to actually assign who that appointed representative is. Um, and that would be done by January 1st each year, really to formalize the, the structure of the executive committee and the membership of the Story County Economic Development Group. And to this point, it's been really whoever attends from any of the communities that have been deemed to be part of this group. Um, and then at the end of that section, um, adding <coughs> two new um, ex officio members, that would be a member of the Conservation Board and a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, really those two entities are they're dealing with um, activities that are in the economic development realm. And they're non-voting members. I think they bring a good insight and bring that communication back to their respective boards. And then section 1.04, fiscal year clarifying, um, just like other governmental entities, this operates on a fiscal year of July 1st to June 30th. Um, Article 2, um, sections 2.01 and 2.02 really set up where the principal office is. Um, obviously, as Jennifer is the chair, the mailing address could be um, different each every two years, but the principal offices reference this building. And the website would be Story County's official website, which we all know is storycountyiowa.gov. Under section Article 3, officers um, setting forth the elections and the terms of office, that they're on an even calendar year, so every two years, and actually, last week the meeting was? Yes. Last track of time. Last week, we're in an even, even year, and so the, men, the election did occur last week, and the terms are for two years on a July 1st to June 30th basis, again, matching the fiscal year. 
the secretary position was removed on the buy list, and I'll get back to that with reference to the section 4.06. Um, there's some there are some technical assistance that Story County can provide, but wasn't necessary to be redundant of the bylaws. Um, Article 4 adds language to make sure that the is recognized the meetings are public meetings subject to the requirements of Chapter 21 of the Code of Iowa, and that notice of that meeting is put in accordance with um, that section and other requirements we have. With that, I would assume that direction would be given to staff, likely me, to make sure that I'm the one who goes through notices on the website and the bulletin board, which would be the official bulletin board. And then section 4.06, like I just mentioned, um, the secretary position was removed, but the minutes section was um, added to to make sure that it's identified that the minutes are could be taken by a Story County Administrative Staff, whether that's myself or Drew or whoever is in a um, position like Drew's. And then we would bring those forward for approval by the Board of Supervisors. Um, under Article 5, voting and rules of order, the presumption of assent was added in Section 5.03. I'm, I'm going to stop right here. I failed to say something. What was very interesting as we delved into this, not one of us had a complete copy of the bylaws. Mm -hmm. So there are some additions that um, are new, but we need to be new. Um, we just don't know if they were there or not. So they may not be new. So I should have said that to you. Mm -hmm. um, conflict of interest was added to Article 6. Um, so that, that would be standard language in the bylaws. Article 8 talks about staff assistance, again, going back to the ability of the board to um, identify myself or someone else to provide technical assistance. And then under Article 9, the last page, um, just clarifying how the board considers amendments and then um, how that's communicated back to the Story County Economic Development Group. And then lastly, where the original documents are stored so that we don't run into them. Situations like we did, and you'll know that these will be recorded to upon approval. So we know the will these will be available in the reporter's office. Any questions on the bylaws? Do you, you get, Jennifer, this is for you more than Leanne. Do you feel like that this is now um, an adequate representation of not only the way the group is currently functioning, but our, our hopes and expectations for the way the group will function into the future? It is, absolutely. Um, and the group uh, went through it with a pretty much a fine to foam, um, sometimes changing words very minorly to make sure that it was um, very over, you know, had an overall spectrum of, of what we're doing and how we're going about it. All of our Good. I mean, it looks to me, so I was frustrated by our um, uh, lack of formality in that group uh, through the years. We couldn't put our hands on a complete copy of the original bylaws. Uh, the, the group was functioning, but there wasn't a real good mechanism to tell us how the group was supposed to be functioning. I'm really appreciative of what you went through. I went through these pretty closely, and, and it looks to me like exactly uh, what we're hoping for this group. So thank you. Questions, comments? Not having looked at what you previously had, just going through these like you did, I guess I see everything here that gives me comfort in saying this is what you would expect that a group operating as we have. But I see no blurring omissions or anything else. I just I have a couple comments on the guidelines. I just want to address with you real quick. Um, as I stumbled at the beginning, um, the pool we've gone ahead and really clar clarified the two where the hundred thousand dollars is um, how it's divvied up and distributed. The annual allocation is what goes per capita to the communities um, that gets determined based on per capita. But only for communities for that participate communities. in this program. Yeah, for eligible communities. And the eligibility criteria is set up in the guidelines then too. Um, what is the second second funding mechanism then is the project funds. And that really is what was confusing people because they're called pool funds. You normally think of pool funds as the, the right. ones that were the annual allocation. Those are set up now that it's a maximum of 15% or whatever the total funds are allotted annually by the board. So in this particular, up to $15,000 can go to, towards those project funds. There's a lot of discussion as to the eligibility criteria and the types of projects. I think 
everyone's on the same board now, the types of projects, the expectation is um, can be submitted ultimately approved through that. There is set up now in the guidelines so a, a procedure though for the chair to communicate that allocation um, to the, the auditor's office and then ultimately receive funding through the board of supervisors for both the annual allocations and then the project funds. And that was a little bit, that, that was an area where I'm, I'm appreciative of having additional guidance and information so that we were on the same page for the procedure. And, and this used to, the, the appropriation of the funds used to be on a, what everybody assumed was a reimbursement process. Um, we've shifted it so it's more um, at the beginning of the fiscal year instead of the end to hopefully help the county for funding and if there happens to be any rollover from this um, from this group, um, it would be clear to earlier in the fiscal year yep. versus toward the end. Yeah, we had one year where we didn't get stuff turned in on time, and so it caused it to carry over to a new fiscal year, and that just creates all kinds of issues. So I'm appreciative that, you know, having everything in by June 15th every year gives us enough time to deal with it. Um, so, any questions or thoughts? Wayne? The only question, I'm sorry, I'm a little late, but I've got the wife on. Okay, Good. so things are going great. Um, were there major, when you said you were having discussions about uh, the allocations, uh, and the kinds of projects that we had approved in the past, were there some areas that uh, the group felt that they'd like to see included and maybe that weren't looked at? You know, uh, I'm thinking of the 100,000 uh, that we're talking about, not some of the other special projects where they, oh, I think the, 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 the fact that Supervisor Sanders was looking at, again, was the structure seemed to be somewhat loosely defined and laid out. And we were looking for a little bit more uniformity uh, and consistency so that as you went from year to year, uh, you know, it, it made the application uh, that much easier uh, to identify. But did you see, were there some areas that uh, they talked about that they'd like to see included that, uh, uh, or the, the categories broad enough to cover many of those projects? They did for like the project funds, they did expand from four identified areas where that would qualify to, um, to yeah, yeah. several. Uh, but added in an extra step for before yeah, those funds can be released. Right, so there, Wayne, there were quick, it was always a little nebulous in my mind, what was eligible and what wasn't eligible. This to me looks like it opens up more eligibility, sends it through that group first, but then it has to come to the Board of Supervisors prior to awarding those project funds. So you got two components, right? You got the per capita funds, which is just a division based on number of people to the to the communities that are part of this part of the group. Then the second one is project funds, which currently is about fifteen thousand um, dollars. And now I think it opens up these communities to be really kind of aggressive with what kind of projects they bring forward, but it requires then a presentation to the Board of Supervisors, which is a new step that we have not had. Okay. I know there was one particular item that they discussed that they, uh, which is whether funding can go towards staff and administrative costs, but they allow, they're allowing on the, in the annual allocation, but they are not allowing right. In project funds. Project funds will be things like um, brochures <laughs> and welcome signs and pro specific pro one-off projects, not ongoing costs. Okay. Other questions, comments, no, or so expect action? See. Jennifer ran a very good meeting last week. I think you had a lot of buy-in, and I, of course, think the takeaways from that because I think a lot was offered up. All down the long run. By the time if there's nothing further, I would sure entertain a motion to approve the proposed amendments to the bylaws. Okay, I'm going to stop the proposed amendments and it's placed before us today for the economic development group. I will second that motion. Further discussion? None. Chief? Aye. Clinton? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Passes. Thank you guys very much for your work. Thank you. No agency reports today, departmental reports. We do have Margaret James, environmental health. Good. Hi, Margaret. Good, Good morning, morning, everybody. Margaret. I'm glad you made it, Wayne. Always has some good questions for me. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, you know, I'm all into this healthy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Might not 
be interested in working in Story County uh, next year. Um, if he wants to do it right, then we'd love to have him in Story County. That's right. Welcome. Um, he is certified. Um, six outstanding notice of violations. Uh, so first few, I'll just mention what's going on. <coughs> um, they still haven't gotten their paperwork into DNR, declaring that they're not a public system. He, he did move one more trailer into the loop. Um, so he's moving forward on, um, on getting that well, now, project done. So Marty's on the Board of Health now. But when I was, it seems like December 1st was his drop dead date. Right. So we're one month away, and it sounds like he's got a lot of stuff that he has not done. A lot has to happen between now and then. Okay. Yep. But he is working in that direction, I will say that. Good. Uh, Lincoln Theater Septic, they still haven't gotten their septic in. Um, let's see, what else? And then complaints, and Marty, we talked about this at Board of Health. Um, it's a nuisance building in Nevada owned by the church, and this week um, is their deadline, so I'll need to um, talk to the priest there and see what they come up with to answer those problems. Okay. <coughs> Trainings and meetings, I won't bore you with uh, reading all these, but um, we are required to know a lot of oddball things, so we have to uh, and retain certification, so we go to a lot of oddball classes in that. It's fun. It's, it keeps things interesting. Um, I'm on the board, um, the, 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 set, the state septic board. I tell you what, that's a lot of work. The, the planning, the, you know, the conference planning, I've never done that before. It's a lot of work. Well, thank you for doing it. It's important. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Lady, um, Dakota Access Pipeline, we have had no calls, no issues uh, that I know of um, as far as environmental health is. President Walton and I already talked about that. Site review for bed and breakfast conducted. We did come up with a, um, a decent septic system option for them, so they're going forward with that. Uh, we've had the new sanitarium for Hardin County come down with training her. I think she's a good match for that county. Um, Strategic plan update for water quality and work with Leanne on that. And they in hearing three of us participated in that from our department. Thank you. Uh, Iron Bridge subdivision plan review. Um, so we're working on that subdivision uh, with planning and zoning. Oh, zoning was zoning, sorry. Um, just working on them getting the, the septic squared away with the engineer. And then um, this is an interesting thing. This just happened yesterday. I, we did a CEP CEP review for Hickory Grove Park. They're adding that shower house. So, um, so we're going to, you know, we just want to make sure that Lagoon was doing what it needed to do. So Mike and I and two of his guys, Bo and Russ, went out there to try to figure out if the um, effluent is going from the shower room and making it down. So we put dye in it, and that's. You don't get more fun than putting dye in water and, and, and following it. That's just a lot of fun. So, um, so we lifted up manholes and, and slowly went there, and then it wasn't showing up in the lagoon. We were like, you know. So after doing a lot of things and digging around this map, the two guys got in the canoe and pushed the duckweed away, and there was the duckweed. It was. Okay. It was. <laughs> so yay. So. Um, so the, the one thing I did see is the fence really needs to be uh, repaired down there because that is a definite requirement of the state DNR to have, you know, for safety reasons and then proper sanctions. So Margaret, you may not know this, and Wayne, this question may be for you, and, and maybe it's more a Mike Cox question, but at one point we were working with Central Iowa Rural Water to, to end up attaching to Colos lagoons. Where does that stand? Uh, that fell through. It's, it's, it's interesting you mention this because that was going to be my question because I was at the conservation special board meeting last night and so there was a little update on the Grove uh, sewer project and I would have to say that Mike Cox uh, said uh, this whole idea of learning about dye and all of that, he said it was quite an education, oh, okay. <laughs> paying for help, uh, but he did say uh, that uh, the issue was Colo itself and it seems to be tied in with the mobile home uh, uh, park there and what may or may not happen with that. Uh, they are going to hopefully have some ongoing communication uh, regarding that. I probably shouldn't comment too far uh, with that because we've not set up a meeting with Colo yet regarding is there a wiggle room, is there a way that we can revisit. Uh, 
the concept was uh, possibly even a partnership type of, uh, of an arrangement rather than just as a, a, a user uh, of so forth. So there's going to be a little bit more uh, with that. But I think the whole fact that the interagency uh, review team and with the um, uh, maybe per permitting process, uh, uh, some steps that they didn't anticipate. And so it's kind of slowed the project down just a little bit, but I think in the, in the end they feel uh, very good about uh, the direction that this is going to go, and I certainly want to uh, thank you for working directly with uh, Mike and, and, and his staff. Because uh, we want to do it right. Sure. And, well, medium that's, term, that's though, what it's all about. medium term, our lagoon <coughs> is not accepted. Right. We, we either need to go in and do something with a new lagoon or, or repair that one, or we need to tie in with Polo. Oh. But, Margaret, what I'm taking, my takeaway here is that all said and done, once two brave people got in a canoe and pushed out into the middle of this thing, we're good that the new shower building is, in fact, delivering to the lagoon as we expect. Anything for Mark? No. First slide I thought was pretty good, and Wayne would probably <laughs> chuckle about this too, but everyone wants to talk about bridges. I want to talk about septic systems. <laughs> Can you put that first slide back up, please? Can you see it? <laughs> Numbers are suspect, and that's our, our software that's, I think, pulling numbers from the wrong okay. fields. 
when we had the uh, new computer stuff, things went pretty haywire with our calculating. So, um, so don't look at this. Yeah. But I think it was around 80, but we're not as high as last year. And remind me the action this board took with time uh, time of transfer now that's new for, for Story M. It's a couple years ago. Time of transfer, well, you know, we used to have, a, have we used to have an inspection program in the county, and the state passed that, and just like the payphones, you can't touch that. Okay. So our program actually went backwards. But it went way backwards to start with. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because there's that whole list of exemptions. <clears throat> right. Consanguinity, the uh, divorce, the bankruptcy, so the banks don't have to put anything in. Um, so all of those, where we used to inspect them and right. require replacement, they don't. So uh, it's so we're still back. Any other questions for Margaret? Right. Margaret, thank you very much. No other reports. Public forum number two, opportunity for members of the public to address items not on today's agenda. Board may not take any action due to the requirements of the open meetings law, but we might do, do so in the future. Anyone wishing to address the board on any topic? Seeing no one moving the microphone, liaison assignments <laughs> committee meeting updates. Wayne? Uh, nothing on liaison, and just that uh, uh, conservation board last night uh, did meet uh, to discuss uh, uh, the uh, money that was received uh, from the, the pipeline that uh, was approved last week that went into the general fund, and a resolution uh, will be uh, coming uh, forth uh, uh, next week. Uh, good discussion, uh, felt very good about uh, where we were in that process. Uh, then there was considerable discussion about the I will uh, project and the 38 cents and the legislation that is currently there. Uh, I gave them just a quick update that uh, uh, at the ISAC Board of Directors meeting that I attended last Thursday and Friday, uh, representatives, the lobbyists from the Iowa League of Cities, uh, as well as its executive director came and presented to us. And what was interesting uh, is that the League of Cities is uh, going to be proposing perhaps a change in the distribution formula. Uh, which would give cities a little bit more of a piece of the pie. Uh, I get the impression uh, that Isaac and counties are not uh, willing to jump on board. Uh, one of the discussions, and Margaret, I don't know, uh, when we're talking about water quality, as of course you all know, water quality is the buzzword right now. And uh, so, so some of the three eight cents uh, was attempted to be tied to the water quality initiative. However, if you look at the legislation that was passed, they clearly define where those dollars would go and what type of projects. And counties uh, believe that that's what the legislature should basically do. So what the League of Cities is saying that they might be interested in, if they wanted to change that to a one cents, uh, rather than three eight cents, and then the additional dollars could go toward water quality initiatives, at least they would be supported. So trying to get the Farm Bureau in, online uh, with the, the support of that activity, I think is uh, are, are gonna be uh, problematic. Uh, the issue for counties is that once you start talking about changing the distribution formula, that opens up a whole different can of worms. And the likelihood of getting consensus in that area uh, may mean that the 38 cents uh, uh, funding for other uh, conservation uh, approved projects uh, could be hampered. So that's something that ISAC is going to be watching very closely. I think everybody is convinced that water quality uh, is going to be a topic that the legislature uh, is going to be a, uh, addressing uh, this year. The key is where the funding is going to come from. Uh, you know, whether the governor's proposal that talked about uh, some of those dollars from education uh, uh, over a period of time would be utilized or what have you. Uh, so I think we need to be, be uh, in tune with that. I, uh, along with uh, Matt Cosgrove, who is the conservation uh, director that's on the ISAC board, uh, really 
uh, uh, and uh, feel that the supervisors are going to want to work closely with our conservation board statewide to make sure that we have a common message, that we need to be on the same page when we communicate with our legislators about this 38 cents and how, uh, what projects uh, 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 should be there. And uh, I think that's something that uh, is basically going to uh, uh, be another factor. And then, the, so beside the I will, the other, only other thing uh, uh, to basically report from that meeting is that um, there will be uh, some ongoing discussions uh, with some of the language change that will be presented to uh, the, the General Assembly uh, in terms of some of the guidelines of, uh, of uh, how we operate as a, as, as a board and as an entity. But I think that uh, the legislative objectives, as maybe you sat in on last week, <coughs> group, uh, pretty much are the same. The board pretty much approved those with just a few uh, minor word changing in one particular uh, category just to make it a, a little bit clearer and give direction to our lobbyists uh, where the counties were basically going to go. But that's still got to be ratified by the full membership in the fall, at fall school. So all in all, it was a, an excellent uh, a meeting. Uh, and I think uh, we came out of that clearly with uh, uh, an attitude of county supervisors, uh, ISAC board, uh, and one of the questions deal with when do you vote in support of something or do you take a, a position of, uh, of uh, undecided? The minimum wage is one of those topics that came up. I don't know exactly where the ISAC board is going to come down on. Currently right now they are advocating for the state to take this up. Uh, on a unified basis, so they may, they're supportive of the, of the, the study and moving toward that, but I don't think they're going to take a position as to saying what the increment should be uh, at, one, at, at any given point at this time. They're going to want to study and wait and see how this is all going to flush out, and then before a decision is made, they will reach out to supervisors across the state uh, to get their input in terms of should we switch from an undecided to a support or what have you. Nine times out of 10 when it's controversial, uh, it's usually an undecided vote is what the lobbyists basically do uh, during uh, uh, that entity. But uh, this will certainly be something that I'm sure the supervisor candidates are interested in. That minimum wage is going to be a topic of discussion uh, at the, at the uh, state house this year. Uh, where it's going to go, we don't know, uh, but I think that uh, most of the people are, are somewhat in agreement is they don't want to see all the, the counties all having a different different uh, uh, a wage, uh, if, if, if at all possible. Uh, but uh, so that's going to be of interest to us as we uh, proceed uh, down the road. So uh, that's all I can report at this time. Uh, we will be having another meeting uh, uh, late November, right before the fall of school, and that will give uh, a little bit more direction uh, to us. Yeah. So, if the League of Cities want to make want to ensure that I will does not get funded this year, um, then they should come come ahead with their proposal. But that just seems like a good way to me when you got something that already passed with a substantial margin uh, from the voters of, of Iowa and then you want to go in and tinker with it, it just seems like a good way to give those opponents of it uh, a way to keep oh, anything from happening. So, thanks, thanks for representing us on that stuff. Marty. Had a pretty substantive uh, economic development group meeting in Maxwell last week. I think it was a free-flowing exchange of conceptuals and solicitations of big ideas. You have peer communities and their representatives sat down together, and I think that uh, they found some uh, common ground to see some tangibles going forward. Let's see what comes from that. Historic County uh, Rec Center group, I believe, is, if not at that point, are going to be moving to adopt the siting plan of potential rec facility in Nevada on the uh, hospital grounds. The hospital has said that would be the rationale behind them supporting its uh, uh, existence, and I think that there are some announcements along those lines will be coming forward, so stay tuned on that one. 
Good. Uh, Healthy Life Center uh, meeting tonight. Let's see, I, you've got a forum that you're going to when you're going to be with me representing the county at that Healthy Life Center right. meeting. That that thing uh, is fascinating. I do have one other thing before you die. Yeah, well, and I'm, I'm going to announcements next, and now it's your turn. Okay, tomorrow, uh, a special meeting of the SERPA, uh, which we call ourselves the sub allocation uh, committee, is going to meet. Uh, and the purpose of this meeting uh, is that the DOT has come about with some possible changes uh, to the sub-allocation procedure, uh, and it's primarily uh, funding uh, that will impact a lot of the smaller cities uh, to, in my opinion, be the detriment of counties. Uh, and again, this is another example where we've had standing practice of uh, the uh, formula that has worked well for a number of years, but then uh, the DOT wants to uh, focus more on a regional uh, scope. Uh, and, and, and even though SERPA is within our particular region, but I think this would broaden it more statewide and not necessarily in our particular region. So I've been asked to serve on that committee. Dean Yorty, that's on our uh, mental health governance board, uh, is also representing county supervisors in that area, and we'll have a, a couple other people. Uh, and I don't know, Drew, if you've ever heard anything at all. Uh, did you leave on it? Yep. I'm dead. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, uh, this particular meeting, but I think it's going to be right now. My position is don't change the formula. Keep things as is because it's it's, it's in the best interest of counties not to change that formula. Uh, because HERDA, for example, have come to us, we've carved out some dollars where, where there has been a need, and other small communities, uh, the, the CERP allocation group, where there have been additional funding, have really tried to address some of the needs of, of the other counties. Uh, so it'll be, I don't think we'll get a final uh, decision made, but we're going to hear the DOT proposal. Uh, I think we're going to then, as a committee, have to take that back to the full board before we actually approve uh, which direction we're going to take. So that's going to happen at 9 o'clock tomorrow at the uh, DOT off, uh, at the SERP office in the morning. So I'll be representing that sub allocation committee tomorrow. Super. Thanks, Wayne. Any announcements? No announcements. All right. Seven days from today, everybody, if you haven't voted already, which many, many have, be sure you get out and vote at some point in the next seven days. and. What, uh, 10 hours. <laughs> I did, if there's nothing further, I'd take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Do you know Andrea White? You met her.